talking Trojans with Ryan Abraham. You can catch him on uscfootball.com with, of course, USC taking on Ohio State. The two teams left out of the college football playoff at number five and number, I believe, seven in the country or number eight in the country. What does it matter at this point? Uh, they are just on the outside of the college football playoff, but still in a marquee matchup in one of the New Year's six games at the Cotton Bowl. Ryan, uh, the last we talked to you was uh, following, or actually just prior to the Pac-12 championship game in a matchup against Stanford. It was a really good football game, one in which I think most of the time USC, I thought, showed to be the better team, but certainly Stanford hung right in there, and it was an extremely close game down to the wire at 31-28. Uh, just your thoughts about the performance of the Pac of the um, the Trojans in the Pac-12 title game. Yeah, it wasn't uh, certainly wasn't a repeat performance the first time these the first time these two teams played. That was the best game USC played all year in week number two, just blowing out Stanford. But in this game, you know, USC dominated the yardage. Some of the stats you look at, you know, over 500 yards of offense uh, for USC. Stanford only completed 10 passes in the game, but they made big plays and plays wouldn't have counted. And there were times where maybe a USC DB looked like he was in good position and didn't make the play. Uh, not, you know, Stanford has great tall receivers and they do a really good job, you know, with the ball downfield. So, um, I think that they hurt USC at really critical moments and you feel like at halftime, USC should have been up by, you know, 14 points or something and end up being only up by three and they kind of hung around. I think this is, a, it was kind of a microcosm of USC's entire football season where you're talking about a team that looks like they should be winning more points than they are. Uh, and they just usually aren't. But, you know, at, at the end, you just kind of get a feeling like they're going to do enough. And that there was a goal line stance that was uh, really amazing. Seven plays from, you know, inside the 10 or whatever for Stanford and coming up, you know, just short. And then USC going 99 yards the other way. That's just kind of the way this team has gone, where they're kind of on the ropes and they look like, man, they could fall behind. And then they do something, uh, make a big play. Someone makes a big play. And then they get that the offense crack. I mean, but to, to go 99 yards against Stanford uh, it was pretty crazy in the title game. And that's you know, but that's just that's kind of way this team has been. So I thought it was a really good like kind of microcosm of USC's whole season that game. In terms of the passing game, I think it was of note that Deontay Burnett did not have a huge game, didn't have to have one. I think he had one reception for less than 10 yards because I think there was a a, a point in the season, and it was certainly. Uh, somewhat expected going into the season based on Sam Darnold's run down the stretch and Deontay Burnett's uh, uh, uprising at the conclusion of uh, 2016 and his play in the Rose Bowl that these two were really locked in and maybe Darnold was relying on Burnett a little bit too much, but uh, they're able to win that caliber of a game, a Pac-12 championship game against Stanford and not have to rely on Deontay Burnett and Sam Darnold going to some other guys. Yeah, that was that was really interesting, and they haven't said. I mean, they've been a little cautious or coy about what some of the injuries are. You kind of get the feeling he might be banged up a little bit, that they haven't uh, necessarily talked about. I think he only had like thirty-three plays, maybe, in the game. It's not like he played the whole time, but you saw in this game, Michael Pittman, uh, who was er you know, injured early in the season, that you felt like, hey, he might be a factor this year. Really had a slow start, but he set a Pac-12 uh, championship game record with 100. I think it was 146 uh, receiving yards. He had that big, like 50-something yarder from the one-yard line that really took USC out of uh, the danger zone there. And we've seen Tyler Vaughn's emerge. I think uh, Stephen Mitchell's played, you know, pretty well throughout the year. So I think the beginning of the season, he didn't, he wasn't really sure uh, losing Juju Smith-Schuster and losing. Darius Rogers and some of the other guys. I mean, there's four receivers that were like really his main targets that were all gone. And we saw, like you said, Deontay Burnett kind of come on towards the end. They really relied on him a lot in the beginning of the season. And now more guys have emerged. So if Burnett doesn't play a whole lot, like he didn't really in the championship game, there were still enough guys out there that he could rely on. So I think that's helped Sam Darnold's game develop throughout the year, just knowing that there's more targets. I think Tyler Vaughn is going to be a really special player. And we saw what Michael Pittman can do. He's a big body guy. Uh, and it shows he can run also. He's running away from some guys. So I think it's helped him. It, it took a little while, but I think Sam Darnold now feels comfortable with the group of receivers he has. 